All right, so how many of you have ever been to a dance at any point in your entire lives? Raise your hand. Now, now keep your hand in there if you've been to a good dance. All right, now raise your other hand if you've ever been to a bad dance before. You know that dance. You look out on the dance floor, it's so empty, it's like, a, like an 8 a.m. ACPA ed session. Um, so, all right, so we've all been to good dances and bad dances. If you were to look up at the screen, on the count of two, point to which dance you think is the better dance. Ready? One, two, point. Go. All right, set the hands down. Now, when people look at the B dance, the first thing they do is they see themselves as the giant of the dance floor. And they also see order and control on that dance. And then, unlike the order and control on the B dance, the A dance folk, they look at the screen and they see chaos. But in that chaos, they've seen all these people connecting and building relationships on this dance floor. And look, you all already intuitively know what makes a good dance. Because imagine you walk onto a dance floor and you look around and you don't know anyone else on that dance floor and no one knows each other. DJ could put on the hottest song of the day and chances are very few people would dance. But if you walk onto a dance floor and you look around and you see all your friends and you're like, hey, 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 DJ could put on a happy birthday song and you know one of your friends would be like, oh, that's my song, and get all excited. <laughs> Not because the song was great, but because you had friends, connections, and relationships built up on that dance floor. And that brings me to rule number one of dance floors. The more friends you have on the dance, the more fun that dance is going to be, and the longer that dance is going to last. Now, for rule number two, I need to step off the dance floor and go to New York City. A friend of mine got a text message one day that said, meet in Union Square with a pillow in a black plastic bag. When the clock strikes two, pull out your pillow and begin pillow fighting. He didn't know how many got the text message or how many are showing up, but he says, I'm totally going. So he takes his pillow, puts it in a black plastic bag, walks down to Union Square. This is what it looked like in the morning. And this... <laughs> is what it looked like at two in the afternoon. 5,000 people showed up for this pillow fight in Union Square. And look, if you look at it from the top down, it looks exactly like a massive dance floor where the most engaged people are in the center. They're so engaged, they have feathers poking them in their eyes and like, ah! And then you have the least engaged people are all the way at the edge. They're just trying to get to work via the subway and they're like, what the heck is going on? <laughs> Right? So and this brings us to rule number two of dance floors, is that there's different levels of engagement, and each level of engagement wants to be treated differently. And once we recognize that level of engagement, then we can start connecting to those people in different ways. So rule number one, rule number two, and now let's take it off the dance floor to your college campus. And imagine you have the moment to look down. According to the National Survey on Student Engagement, 60 to 84% of students will never participate in any college-sponsored activity. That means we have a dance where 84% are off to the side looking at us going, Psh, try to get me to participate. <laughs> and why does this matter? Why does this situation matter? Because Vincent Tinto said that, uh, that social integration with the institution is key to academic success. And the number two reason why 30% of students drop out or transfer their, uh, their first year of the school is because they don't get socially integrated into the institution. And that's critical. So here's the question. How do you go from a bad dance to a good dance, or a bad campus to a good campus, where your students are socially integrated and they feel connected to the institution? Well, the good news is there's four simple steps. Step number one introduce yourself. Hey, my name's Tom. Hey, my name's Tom. Hey, my name's Tom. Step number two, introduce people to each other. Uh, have you met? Uh. Step number three, <laughs> connect people together around shared interests. You should totally connect with you because you two both love peanut butter. Step number four, get out of the way. It's not about you. It's about them connecting with each other. This is a critical moment because this is when you stop becoming the gatekeepers of engagement and start becoming the facilitators of engagement. And it looks like this. Imagine I'm at orientation and I'm walking around, I'm saying hi to all these students. Hey, my name's Tom, hey, my name's Tom, hey, my name's Tom, and keep going. I could keep connecting with all these students on my campus, but the problem is at the end of the day, I've connected with everyone else and this is what my campus is gonna look like. I've connected with everyone else, but no one's connected with each other. So that leads to problems. One, I'm the linchpin for engagement on my campus. And number two, if I leave this situation or this dance floor, the dance will slowly, slowly start to fall apart. So the alternative is, I'm at orientation. 
hey, my name's Tom, hey, my name's Tom. Before I leave these two people, I want to connect them together. Uh, have you met um? Because you both totally love peanut butter. And then you go, and you keep doing that, following the four steps, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. By the end of the day, your campus isn't going to look like this anymore. Now your campus is going to have this line right here. And that line is critical to dance floor theory because that line turns into a dance that slowly everyone starts to know each other and gets connected. And it builds and builds from there because no longer are you connecting you to them, now you're connecting them to each other. And it turns into a dance that looks like this. And you know this is a great dance because you got a guy hanging from the chandelier at the top going, woo! <laughs> But you also know this is a great campus. This is the kind of campus where a student walks on and feels like they look around and see everyone they know and they're like, hey, hey. Then you as a DJ get to put on a happy birthday song and that student will be like, oh, that's my song, and get all excited. This is the idea that dance floors and college campuses actually operate the exact same way. So to recap. Different levels of engagement on a dance floor. Each level wants to be treated differently. Find out what a student's level of engagement is. Connect them with a near peer around a shared interest and then get out of the way. Because it's not about you, it's about them connecting with each other. So here's what I want to leave you with. What are you going to do back on your campus to connect more people together so that they feel socially integrated? But I said, you know what, we shouldn't wait till we get back to campus. We should start this process right now, right here at ACPA. So what I brought with me were 200 free hug signs that are about to be rapidly passed through this audience. I challenge you to take this sign, turn to the people around you, and just see what happens. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of the conference. My name is Tom. You can find me on Twitter at TomOnTwitter.com. Thank you. Woo!